In most laboratories, the kind of microscope that's used is a compound binocular light microscope. When the dust jacket is removed from the scope, we can see its basic structures. All microscopes have a base where the, it sits on the surface, a stage where the slide is placed, an arm, sometimes with a handle like this one has, and a body tube which helps transport the light from the base up to the sample. Microscopes are also going to have some kind of an electrical cord on them because that's going to supply the power for the light source. There are lots of controls that we need to be familiar with on the microscope, starting, of course, with the light source control. The light is going to come up through the base of the scope and through two structures, the iris diaphragm right here and the condenser. The iris diaphragm is going to determine how much light comes in and you can see you can adjust that for the lens you're using. And the condenser is going to focus that light up through your specimen sitting on the slide on the stage. It's important that you remember the condenser underneath this underneath the stage so that your light source is correct for the lens you're using. There are controls underneath the right side of the stage that will help move your slide around on the stage and move the stage itself. It's critical when you place a microscope slide onto the stage that you seat it into these silver clips here because those will hold the slide steady while you move the stage or move the slide itself. Remember, a compound microscope has multiple objective lenses available for us to use. On this black ring structure, there are grooves that we can hold on to and rotate which lens we want in place at any one time. On any compound microscope, there's going to be a series of lenses ranging from a low power lens, typically either a 4x or 5x, and we have a 4x here, moving up to either a 10x or a 20x lens, then up even further to a 40x lens, and then finally to the oil immersion lens, which is a 100x lens. It magnifies the object on the slide 100 times. Now, you should note that the 40x lens is a lens called the high dry lens. It's a high powered lens, relatively speaking, at 40x magnification, but we use it dry. In other words, we don't put any oil on the slide with a 40x lens. The only lens that uses oil with it is the 100x lens. In fact, you can only use that lens with oil. So we always have to be very careful when we're rotating our objective lenses not to accidentally rotate the 100x lens in place. That lens is designed, when it's rotated in place, to come in just on top of the microscope slide. And if there's no oil on the slide, you will scratch the lens. And that brings us to the eyepieces of the microscope. These eyepieces are quite flexible. They're able to be moved farther apart from each other or closer together, depending upon the user. It's tempting when you're using a binocular microscope to keep one eye closed but they are designed to be used 
with both eyes open. And in order to see a singular field of vision under the microscope, you need to have the two eyepieces spaced correctly for your eyes. Everybody's eyes are a different distance apart from each other, and that's why modern microscopes have the functionality to move the eyepieces farther apart or closer together. The other thing to note about the eyepieces is that one of them is going to be individually adjustable, like this one on the right. What this means is that you can focus the right eyepiece separately from the left. So if you have complex vision problems, if you wear certain types of glasses, for example, that help with different vision problems in each eye. A modern compound microscope will compensate for that. You can focus the scope for your left eye using the primary controls, and then you can make adjustments for your right eye directly on the right eyepiece. Modern microscopes can compensate for almost any vision problem that the user might have. One other thing to note, if you wear eyeglasses like I do, when you use a microscope, you take your eyeglasses off. The microscope is capable of making all the adjustments that you need to bring a specimen into focus. When you're ready, you take your microscope slide with your specimen on it, place it into the silver clips on the stage, and then using the controls underneath the right side of the stage, move the slide directly underneath your objective lens. You can see here that I've now turned on the light source at the base of the scope, and there's a beam of light coming up from the bottom through the sample on the slide and into the eyepieces. We control the amount of light coming up through the slide using this wheel on the left side of the base of the scope. It's important to remember that the amount of light that you will need to comfortably view a specimen on a microscope slide depends on which objective lens you're using. The lower the power of the lens, the less light you will need. The higher the power of the lens, the more light you will need. So we are constantly adjusting the amount of light that we are running through the sample on our slide. The single most common problem that students have when they're learning how to use a microscope is learning how to focus. The question I get most often from students is how do I bring the sample on my slide into focus? And the answer that I give to them is that you're going to follow the same series of steps every single time you examine a slide. You're going to do the same thing every single time until you get really good at it. What you don't want to do when you're trying to focus on a specimen is just jump in and start wildly moving your control knobs that are found here on the right side of the scope. These are your coarse and fine adjustment knobs. The coarse adjustment, the larger wheel here, is literally moving the stage up and down, closer to the lens and farther away from the lens. These are big movements when you are looking through the eyepieces. The fine adjustment knob the smaller wheel here 
is the one that's going to make the final adjustments in your ability to bring your specimen into focus. You want to begin the process of focusing on an object with your fingers on the coarse knob, not the fine knob. Let's talk about the steps that we take every single time when we want to bring a specimen into focus. Once your slide is securely in place in the clips on the stage, with the beam of light visibly passing through the sample on the slide, rotate the lowest power lens into place. And again, on our scope, it's this very small objective lens that you can see here with a red line around it. Ours is a 4x lens. That lens is capable of magnifying the object on the slide four times. Now note that that's not the total magnification that we're using. The eyepieces on a microscope also magnify the image. The eyepieces magnify 10 times. So in order to determine the total magnification that we're using, we have to multiply the magnification of the objective lens times the magnification of the eyepieces. So using this low power lens, we are magnifying that specimen 4 times 10, or 40 times. Rotate the stage upwards with the course adjustment knob until the slide is as close as possible to the low power lens. Now, start looking through the eyepieces and slowly rotate the course adjustment knob downwards. You have to do this while you're looking through the eyepieces. As you do this, you're going to see an image appear and then quickly disappear in front of your eyes. In other words, as you rotate the stage downwards, you're going to come into focus and then quickly out of focus with the course adjustment knob. At that point, bring the stage back up until you see that image and then reach for the fine knob. It's the fine adjustment knob that will do the work, that last step of bringing the image into focus for you. Modern microscopes are par focal. And what that means is, once you have your image in focus on the low power lens, you can move to the next lens with only fine adjustments needed. You can go from lens to lens to lens, and the image will still be essentially in focus for you. Again, you'll probably need to make some very fine adjustments, but you don't have to begin the whole process of focusing all over again. The term we use for that is par focal. We do the focusing process once on the low power lens, and then we can rotate through the next power and then the next power with only fine adjustments needed. You can see that the 40x lens is in place right now in the image. Remember, we call this one the high dry lens. And for many of the things that we examine in a microbiology lab, we can see them under this 40x lens. So bacteria and eukaryotic microbes like fungi and algae and protozoans, we can see under a 40x lens. Remember, if you're asked to determine the total magnification for a 40x, 
it would be 40 times 10. 40x from the objective lens, 10x from the eyepiece. 40 times 10, or 400x total magnification. Remember, there's one more lens on the microscope, and that's the oil immersion lens. That's the 100x lens. The combination of the 100x lens and the eyepiece, 100 times 10, brings us to a total magnification of 1000x when we use the oil immersion lens. We achieve the best detail for microbial specimens when we use the 100x oil immersion lens. We can see basic structure using the 40x high dry lens. In other words, you can see the shape of a bacterial cell using the 40x lens, but you won't be able to get any more detail than that unless you use the 100x oil immersion lens. So it's important that as students of microbiology, we know how to use the 100x lens correctly. And that's what we'll talk about next. Your image is in focus under 40x. Rotate about halfway between the 40x lens and the 100x lens. Using that black wheel again, rotate away from the 40x, but not all the way to the 100x. Stop about halfway between them. Now you need to apply the oil. There's lots of immersion oil products on the market. This one happens to be what we use in our teaching laboratory. This is the Resolve Immersion Oil product. And one of the reasons that I like it is because it uses a, a stick applicator to place one or two drops of oil on the slide. The biggest problem that students have when they place oil on a microscope slide when they're learning is that they tend to place too much oil. The stick applicator in this kind of product helps prevent that. Pull the stick out of the bottle. You can see oil will run down the stick to the end and you'll get a nice drop. That is what needs to go on your slide directly where the beam of light is. One maybe two drops only. Just gently touch the stick down towards the slide and you'll get a nice droplet of oil right where you need it. Then you're going to rotate your lens down into place. If you recall what we said earlier, the 100x oil immersion lens is designed to come in on top of the slide, almost touching it. It's designed to slide in place so that it is literally right on top of the slide. You're going to feel like the slide is going to break if you rotate that lens into place. But don't worry, if you have carefully focused your specimen, when you rotate that lens down onto the slide, it will be in the exact correct place. Remember, it's perfectly fine to do a little bit of fine focus adjustment when your oil lens is in place. You're not going to break the slide if you use your fine adjustment knob. But be warned, if you accidentally start using your coarse adjustment knob, you will break the slide. And anybody who does work in a laboratory using a microscope 
has broken a few slides accidentally. Once you've finished examining your specimen using the oil immersion lens, it's not possible to go back to the lower power lenses. You now have oil on your slide. And if you were to rotate the 40X or the 20X lens back into place, you would get oil on those lenses. Now it's not the end of the world. You can clean those lenses if you accidentally get oil on them. But even without oil on them, the lower powered lenses will not be able to see what's on the slide as long as there's oil on the slide. The lower power lenses are designed to be used in air. They will not be able to focus on a specimen if there is oil on the slide. So the best practice is to finish your work using the 40X lens before you go up and use the oil immersion lens. Plan your work so that once you're finished examining the specimen with the oil immersion lens, you're finished with that slide. Now you need to clean up your scope and put it away. If there's one thing that you will find in every single laboratory, it's these boxes of Kim wipes. These little green boxes are ubiquitous and we use Kim wipes for all kinds of little cleanup jobs around the lab. But the one thing you don't want to do with a Kim with a Kim wipe is try to clean off an objective lens. Kim wipes are not designed to be used on any kind of a delicate lens. If you took a Kim wipe and tried to clean off, for example, an oil immersion lens, you would scratch that lens. So don't reach for the Kim wipes when it's time to clean up your microscope. Instead, reach for lens paper. This happens to be Fisher brand lens paper. There's all different kinds of lens paper available. Lens paper is simply a very fine, very soft type of paper that has been made specifically for the uses on very fragile, very delicate objective lenses. So you can take a piece of lens paper and you can wipe off a dry objective lens, for example, if you think it might have dust on it. You can use lens paper to wipe off eye pieces if they accidentally get dusty or they get some kind of a smear on them from somebody's fingerprint. You can clean off uh, down on the base of the scope where the light source is if dust collects down there. Lens paper can be used on any type of glass or any type of lens to help keep it clean. If you've used the oil immersion lens with oil, however, you're going to want to take the extra step of using a lens cleaning fluid with your lens paper. Simply place a few drops of lens cleaner onto a piece of lens paper and you're ready to go. Now, it's hard to reach an oil immersion lens when it is rotated into place. So you're going to have to do that halfway rotation between the 40X and 100X lens. And you're going to have to rotate the stage down in order to have the room for your hand to get in there with your lens paper and lens cleaner to appropriately clean your lens. Once you're at that halfway point, just gently wipe off the surface of the lens with your lens cleaner. It will take off all that oil and get the, the lens ready for the next time you need to use it. I always tell students to live by the golden rule in the laboratory. And by that, I mean, leave the equipment the way you want to find it. So. Yes, you should always clean off your oil immersion lens before you put your microscope away. 
but do yourself a favor and clean off the other lenses as well. Clean off the eye pieces. Clean off the light source glass. If you do this and then you put your scope away, you know that your scope is going to be clean and ready to go the next time you use it. So, like I said, whenever you use your microscope in a laboratory, do the right thing, clean it up, and it will be ready for the next person who needs to use it. Once the lenses are clean, rotate the low power lens into place, and then using the coarse adjustment knob, rotate the stage all the way down as far as it will go till it's sitting on top of the condenser. Bring the eye pieces as close together as possible and turn off the light source. Wrap the power cord around the base so that it is safely tucked away and then place the dust cover over the scope. It's really important to keep a microscope covered when it sits in the laboratory because dust really easily accumulates on those glass surfaces. So keeping it covered when it's not in use will make your job easier the next time you need to use it.